today's video, I want to show you an updated uh, way of creating meeting rooms. I've done it previously before, that was on Windows with PowerShell, but now I want to show you it on Mac OS and using the Graph uh, PowerShell commands as well. So I've got some set of instructions here, I'll make this into a blog post as well, so it's nice and pretty. But first of all, we need to, uh, on our Mac, we need to run Terminal. Now, I can then open this terminal, and I can uh, use the command brew install cask and PowerShell. So that will use homebrew to install the PowerShell commands on there. I've already done that. But what I've also done on my uh, device, because I don't like the white background, I've created a new way of uh, creating PowerShell. And it's in blue, so I can see the yellow and uh, other colors, etc. So, and it actually starts PowerShell as well. I'll put a link in uh, the blog post and description below on how I did this little uh, trick here to create a new terminal session with um, PowerShell. So your first things you need to do are install your modules. So we use Exchange Online and the Microsoft Graph. Now this is done already, but again, just for completeness, I will show you. And we can see if I run that command, it will then uh, make sure it's up to date and have that correct module on there. Next up is that we need to connect to the device. So uh, connect the, my, my device to the portal because we're using modern authentication. This will actually then open the browser. So make sure you've got your browser signed in and it's on focus. And then what happens is I will connect to Exchange Online. It will then pop uh, a browser open, I'll just show you here. This is what it looks like. It says authentication is complete. You can close that browser. So once that is done, that's using your logged on credentials now in your browser. And again, the same with the Graph API. We will copy that and we will paste that in. So we're now connected as well. These are variables that I've set up here. So this is where I can now have the option to use this variable multiple times within my PowerShell script. So I need to do it once and it does it for the whole rest of the area. So I want to create a new meeting room. Let's call it Prague. So it's now called Prague. Our display name for that room is also Prague, uh, Prague room. So there's my PowerShell. So let's copy these two lines and we are gonna paste them into there. So the variables are now set. Now we're gonna create a new mailbox with a uh, service ID. We're gonna have a mailbox password and our secure password. Then the mailbox is true and it's a room mailbox. So we'll copy that and we will paste that in. And that has created a mailbox, very, very simple. Now what we need to do is update the password policy, and I'm gonna set the user's location, that's handy if you're doing core routing, etc. So I'll paste that in as well. So that is now created there. And I need to understand which licenses I want to apply to this room. So here's a script, again, uh, I found online, some other kind cell helped me put this together. I modified it a bit because I wanted it a little bit how I wanted it to look like. So then I can list out the licenses available. So I've got my Microsoft Teams Room Basic, I've got my Common Area License, I've got my phone system, my Enterprise Voice, and Teams Room Pro. Actually, if I expand this a little bit um, over, this table will also show you how many are in total and how many are available. Let me just run that again. There we go. You can see the number used as well, so you can see what you have spare. So that's nice and cool to see that. So, for example, in this example, I want the Microsoft Teams Room Basic, so I will copy that bit of text there. And then I will set this in a variable as well. So here you go. That's where I would paste in which license I want to use. So I will use this command, and we paste that in. So that's my variable set. So you, you just get a reply there. You don't get anything else. And now I want to set this user ID. Again, it's using the variable of new room, and I want to use that basic license. So that's done got the license set and you can check this license as well if you want so you can paste that in does it have a license yes it does that's assigned now we want to set some identity uh, options on the mailbox so for example I've got uh, a tooltip to say when someone invites his room it's enabled for direct guest join BYD mode etc so again that will be set on the mailbox the next one again some of these are options you don't have to do them uh, is the calendar processing. Some of these are, are mandatory. So if you are using direct guest join, you must allow process external meetings enabled. So again, these are all set here. You can pick and choose which ones you want, but a lot of these are required to make the meeting room booking experience uh, very simple for everyone. Next up, again, this is completely optional. If you're using room lists, this is adding additional information. Or again, if you're using Microsoft Teams panels outside the room, 
you can actually display things like what the TV is in there, what tags are there showing up in the room, for example, uh, whiteboard, direct guest join enabled, uh, is it wheelchair accessible, etc. And this flag here is MTR enabled. Uh, that's not in use yet, but I've set true for now. So again, when it does become in use, it'll be ready to, to be used. And again, I simply just paste that uh, command in and away we go. Now, if you want to add calling plans, so again, uh, same with the, the list before, you need to find your calling plan or your enterprise voice identity in your tenant because they are different. So if you look at this uh, URL list here, this will show you all the different SKUs that are in the, the tenant somewhat different depending on location etc geography but they all may look the same so you need to make sure you get the right one so that is setting the enterprise voice enabled uh, and then that is setting to basically allow you for teams phone and then pstn2 is setting you for the calling plan so you can make calls out so that's that piece uh, and then again optional steps if you are going to use room lists to help find rooms easier you create a new distribution list and then you add that user to the distribution list. So again, I will do that because I've already have distribution list made up. So that's now added the user. And again, for something like your lab or trade shows, you can allow conflicts on the booking schedule too. So that's quite helpful. If you are doing multiple entries and you want overlap calendar entries, it's useful to have the allow conflicts to true. That is it, done. So what does that now look like? So if I jump over to my Exchange Admin, and let's bring that window over here. So you can see I've got all my different room names listed here, and we created uh, Prague. So let's just refresh the page, go to our resources, and scroll down. You now see we have Prague room, and it's now loading the mailbox properties. So now I can look at uh, the details. Let's add the capacity of six people. And then if I go additional information, you can now see it's added all this extra information, wheelchair accessible, etc. So that's a very quick way to make it really easy to do your settings in there without having to go through each one. Cut and paste a PowerShell command line. In. So this is using Mac OS on the latest build with the latest PowerShell and graph um, entries on there. Any questions? Let us know.